On this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's testing the Panasonic TZ10. I bring you the latest tech news, and Otis takes a look at the Chumbi. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Now with GPS being commonplace in some of the latest smartphones, it seems that digital cameras don't want to be left behind and are joining in on the party with built-in GPS that can tell you where you are and where your photos were taken. The Panasonic TZ10 is one of the first of these on the market, so to test it out, John decided to take some snaps around some of Birmingham city centre's prime architecture. Panasonic's TZ or Travel Zoom series of compact cameras like this TZ7 have been favourites on the Gadget Show for a little while. Now there's a new one, this TZ10. Like the TZ7, it's got a 12 times optical zoom. It's got a few more megapixels though, 12 instead of 10. The big news though is GPS. It's always surprised me actually how slow camera manufacturers have been to incorporate GPS receivers. After all, most smartphones have them now and they're much smaller. Certainly quite impressive though initially. I mean, uh, I've only had it on a minute or two and it's correctly identified where I am from its own internal database. It's saying the Repertory Theatre in Birmingham. And there it is. Let's take a picture. Now let's go and find some other Birmingham landmarks and see how well it identifies those. I've just got to in front of the old town hall and the museum and art gallery. Unfortunately, the camera still thinks it's at the Repertory Theatre. Hmm. It's been a minute or so and it has actually caught up now. It's now saying museum and art gallery on the display, so uh, hopefully it's getting there eventually. <laughs> Again, I'm finding it's not keeping up. It's still saying Museum and Art Gallery on the display, even though I'm quite clearly in front of the cathedral and I've had the camera on all the way. Ah, and again, it's caught up, but after about five minutes or so of taking photos, it really is quite slow to lock on to your new position. As for image quality, it's not bad in daylight. If anything, the colours seem a little bit more realistic than the ones on the TZ7. Certainly not they're any sharper, in spite of all those extra megapixels. It's supposed to have better optical image stabilisation than the TZ7, but again, I didn't actually find much difference in practice. As for the AVC HD video, well, that's sharp as ever, but generally of about the same sort of quality. One thing they've definitely improved over the TZ7, though, is the mode dial. It's now much stiffer, so you don't get that endless message popping up saying the mode dial is not in the proper position. They've also given you some limited manual shutter priority and aperture priority modes, which is useful. As well as today's testing, I've tried the TZ10 in a number of locations over the last week or so, and I have to say, overall, I am a bit disappointed. If you're after a camera with built-in GPS, I think you'll be frustrated by its uh, lagginess and its lack of accuracy. If, on the other hand, you don't want to bother with GPS in your camera, I can't see any point in having the more expensive TZ10 over the cheaper and still available TZ7. Right, news time now, and last week saw the Game Developers Conference held in San Francisco. And one of the biggest stories to come from the event was the online gaming service OnLive, which was initially announced at the 2009 conference and is currently set to launch in the US in June. The service aims to kill off the traditional gaming consoles by streaming popular games via the internet. So instead of games taking hours to download or having to buy them directly off the shelf, OnLive relies on video compression technology, which instantly streams video via the internet. So it feels like a game is being played locally, eliminating the need for a powerful PC or console. The company has said that it will deliver on-demand video games via the cloud to the PC, Mac or TV and that it can deliver high-quality gaming to low-end machines. OnLive will be available for a monthly rental fee of around $15 and then subscribers can buy or rent games on the internet. And it looks set to have some prime titles available upon launch including Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect 2 and Borderlands. Sadly though, no word yet on UK availability and pricing but as soon as we have more details we will let you know.
And the Game Developers Conference delivered some big news for Sony as well, as they finally released further information on their motion controller that first came to our attention at E3 last year. It has officially been titled the PlayStation Move, and it comes with a sub-controller, and it looks set to take on Nintendo's well-established Wii and Xbox's upcoming Project Natal. It works with a combination of the PS3 system and the PlayStation Eye camera, which detects the precise movement, angle and position of the PlayStation Move motion controller. And Sony claims it will give gamers a much more precise motion controller experience. Of course, we can't wait to get our hands on this, as it looks like it's going to be a heated battle for the top spot in the motion controller market. And finally, away from the Game Developers Conference, LG has announced that they will be bringing the complete 3D package to the UK, courtesy of their LX9900 3D Ready TV and the BX580 3D Ready Blu-ray player. The TV is part of the company's ultra-thin Infinia range, which launched at CES earlier this year. It will be available in both 47 and 55-inch versions and will offer full HD 3D picture quality. The LX9900 also has Freeview HD built inside. It offers a 10 million to 1 dynamic contrast ratio, has four 1.4 HDMI ports, and is fully web-enabled using LG's Netcast technology, where you can access your favourite sites such as YouTube, Picasa, and AccuWeather. LG have pulled forward the UK release date to May, but annoyingly, you don't get any 3D glasses bundled in with a TV, and they're set to cost up to £100 per pair. But if you're desperate to take the plunge into the world of 3D TVs, then this LG does look set to be one of the first full HD 3D TVs on the market, and just in time for the upcoming 3D Blu-ray and PS3 game releases. Internet media devices are becoming more and more popular, from internet radios to portable video players. Well, one of the latest devices to be released is the Chumbi, which incorporates content like news, weather, celebrity gossip, podcasts and music. So, during some downtime in the office, Otis decided to check it out for himself. Meet the little gadget that wants to be everything to you in your life. It's the Chumbi, um, and it's capable of doing masses of things. It can stream radio, you can plug your MP3 player into it, you can plug your music on a memory stick straight into the back. It has two USB sockets there. It has uh, a number of games that you can play on it that you can download. It does have um, accelerometers built in so you can interact with your games. So there's so many different things it can do and therein lies the problem. It does so many things or wants to be able to do so much. I don't know where in the house it would sit or where in my life it would fit in. There is one big problem. If I want to navigate to any of the myriad of uh, things that this can do, I have a big problem because this is the most frustratingly non-intuitive or interactive touch screens I have ever seen. Right, I'm gonna try and search for a video. Here we go, right. Let's search for videos. Let's try and find a gadget show clip, shall we? T, T. No, I don't wanna, I don't wanna space. Go. No, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna erase the T. H, 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 back. Uh, oh, great, so uh, what's actually come up is a search for um, TB. Um, so I've got really nasty looking images of people suffering from tuberculosis. Okay, so the fact that I can't interact with it in the way I would like means that if there were one of these in my house, it's probably best suited as a squidgy alarm clock. But then just using it as a massive alarm clock and streaming internet radio makes it a really expensive one. It costs £139 for the squidgy version, £109 for the hard version. Do I really want to pay that much money for uh, an alarm clock?
Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for this week, but remember to sign up to our Facebook and Twitter pages for the latest info from Gadget HQ. And don't forget to tune into the main show this Monday night at 8 on 5, because this week it's the Gadget Show versus Special, where Jason, using the help of Modern Warfare 2, takes on the SAS at their own game. Susie uses some of the latest swimming gadgets to try and match the speed and strength of one of the UK's top swimming champions, Karen Pickering. Otis comes face to face with Paul Champ, Gareth Potts, and uses some of the most cutting edge technology designed for the game. And John puts home medical kits to the test to see if he can make the same diagnosis as Dr. Dawn Harper. But from us here at Web TV, we'll see you at the same time next week. <laughs>